Hi all, welcome back. It's been quite a while since my last video and um, things like this one is the reason for that. This is a Conrad Johnson MV100 tube amplifier. It's a 100 watt amplifier. It uses eight EL34 tubes. It's a real monster and quite a quite an amazing piece of equipment. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is um, not to record the repair of this one because this thing came in with multiple problems and I found a few, but I just want to show you a simple way of reducing um, the B plus on this thing, which seems to be one of the problems. Let me go into a bit more detail. This amp was designed to work on a 220 volt uh, main supply. And the problem I have here is that I don't have 220 volts anymore. This is what I'm reading now and more often than not, especially later on in the day, this thing goes up to close to 240 volts. Now that might not seem too dramatic, but when you think that this thing is uh, swinging this voltage up to over 500, you know, a 10% difference or 8% difference starts making quite a, a, an impact. And that impact has been seen with the result of tubes blowing up, the cathode resistors blowing up. Here's an example of one that's been swapped out. And in fact, if you look up here, this one also blew up. These uh, resistors are on the top side of the board. I've tacked this one in here just temporarily because I wanted to uh, solve the problem. And well, just while we're here, you can see this part of the board I've cleaned up. These boards are notoriously dirty with flux, as you can see down here. Now, while sonically they don't really make much of an effect, they really are a mess to work with. So I started cleaning it up and you can see the difference. Now, my problem here is I've got probably about 560, 570 volts on the B+. And that is not what this amp was designed for. This amp was actually designed for a B plus of 500 volts. Now, 550, 560 starts getting a little bit on the dangerous side. And I think that's one of the reasons why some of these uh, tubes were blowing up. One of them is completely dead. The other one sparked over. The other six, fortunately, are slow K. But I don't want to subject this to more stress than it's designed for. And... I had to look at various ways of reducing this B plus by about 50 volts. And the idea was to actually put something in line coming out of the bridge rectifier into the choke before it hits that the point A to try and bring this down to the 500 volts that I require. Various problems arise, as I'm sure you're probably guessing. One way of doing that is to put a resistor in line there. A resistor that would drop about 50 volts when this thing is drawing current. The problem there is it's when it's not drawing current, the voltage stays high because there's no voltage drop. When it is drawing current, it's not constant. So you don't know how much drop you're going to get at any one time. And um, that's really not something that I want to risk. So another way was to use a xenodiode. Again, the problem is that a xenodiode to drop 50 volts passing probably around, you know, between 3 and 500 milli milliamps through it is going to be one hell of a big zener and pretty expensive as well. So that started looking less attractive. So I went looking for alternatives and there are quite a few. And I want to just uh, report back on the one that I chose, which is actually very simple very cheap and seems to do the job quite well. What you're seeing there is a voltage dropper. That's a MOSFET, two resistors, one xenodiode, and it's dropping 50 volts. Um, I will show you now on paper how this thing works, how you can adjust it, what to be careful of. And um, I'm probably gonna make up a more permanent version because this is a bit of a mess. This was obviously just for testing. And I think it might be useful to you as well. 
Now, this is not my design. I believe there are various uh, versions of this uh, related on the web. R.G. Keen is one who um, presented this idea as well. I don't know if he was the first either, but it's on uh, something called MOSFET Follies, I believe it is. It's a page on GeoFX. So I by no means want to claim authorship of this design. I just want to um, build it, show you the result, explain how it works, at least the way I understand it, and hopefully get this beast safely and uh, running, uh, running safely and, uh, and perfectly once again without blowing tubes out, which are quite expensive. And of course, you have to match them as well. So if you blow one tube, you've got to try and find one that matches the other three uh, on one side. And that can be very, very difficult. So if you had to buy a quad per side, you're running into the hundreds of euros, which is not pleasant. And if something that's going to cost you about two bucks is going to help you, then I think that's a pretty good investment. Okay, so here's our challenge. We've got a voltage of, let's call it 550 volts DC. And we have got this going into the amp. It meets the load, which is the amp itself, and then goes down to ground. Okay, now our problem is that 550 is causing damage to this load. It's too high. So how do we drop 50 volts of this? Well, one of the obvious ways of doing this is to put a resistor in line here. And this resistor, as current flows through here, will drop the voltage. There'll be a voltage drop across here. VR. This is what is normally done when you want to create multiple B plus uh, sections on your amp. However, there's a problem. This voltage here will not be constant because it'll depend on the current flowing through this load. So that's not a good idea. So we're not going to use that because it really is going to be this voltage here is going to be anything from 550 when the current is zero, because there's no voltage drop, when no current is flowing. So there's still going to be 550 here, which could cause a problem because it could literally spark over. Now, it's true that when it sparks over, a current will flow, but by then the damage is done. So the resistor is not the option. The other solution is to put a xenodiode in here. Reverse biased xenodiode, which is the normal way that Sorry, that this will work. If you have a 50 volt Zener, what will happen is 550 will arrive here, minus 50 will get to here, and you've got 500 volts, which is what your load wants to see. If you have 400 here, you'll have 350 here. So there'll always be a subtracted amount equal to that Zener. The problem with that is that this Zena voltage multiplied by the current will be the Zena power. So if we have 50 volts across here, and let's say we've got a current flowing of, call it half an amp, 0 0.5 amps, power equals 50 times 0 0.5 equals 25 watts. 25 watt Zena. You're going to have to get one of those that bolts onto your chassis it's going to be expensive and well yeah it's going to be expensive okay it'll work and if this zener goes short it just means your 500 volts uh, is no longer 500 volts it'll be 550 volts because it can go it can go faulty with a short condition if it goes open then it seems that you've just flipped the switch and the power supply is no longer supplying the load that's not too serious okay but the problem mainly is that this zener they're not that uh, easy, to, easy to come across. Um, they're expensive because it's 25 watts. Um, you can get more current than 0.5 amps flowing through this particular amplifier when this thing is, uh, is really drawing. When all, you've got eight tubes in there. So you've got two push-pull sections with duals in parallel for each part of it. 
it could probably go higher than 0.5 amps. It could go as high as 0.8 amps, maybe. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done the sums, but it can go fairly high. So suddenly, this thing can go from 25 watts to 30, 35, 40 watts. If you use a 25 watt Zener, you're going to blow it on the peaks. So what you need to do now is you need to make sure you get a more powerful Zener, call it a 50 watt Zener, for a 25 watt condition. That's going to get really, really costly. Okay. The other thing is, this Zener is at high voltage. You've got 550 here, and you've got 500 here. So this Zener is going to have to be very well insulated from the chassis, from everywhere else, because it's in a condition, in a position, where although the voltage drop across it, the difference, the potential difference is only 50 volts, the one leg is at 550, and the other one is at 500 with respect to ground. So if you touch any of those, you're going to have a bad day. So that's possibly not the way to do it. Where else can you put a Zener if you're going to go for a Zener? Well, the Zener is literally dropping your supply voltage. The supply voltage is where it comes in and the other end is ground. So you're literally looking at the two points across which you have the load. So, if you have 550 between there and there, if you put the Zener in here like this, a 50 volt Zener, you've got the same effect, provided this goes to your minus and this goes to your ground. So now, if you've got this incoming straight through, no resistor, no Zener, this side is at 550, this side is at 50 with respect to the minus point, to the negative supply point. So you have your 500 volts across your load. So all you need to do is change the position of where the ground goes. Why is this an advantage? If you did go for the solution, you've still got the problem of the power dissipation. But why is this an advantage? Well, it's an advantage because this point is at minus 50 volts with respect to ground, which will normally be your chassis. And this point is at zero volts. So if you touch there, you're at zero. If you touch there, you're at minus 50. Probably not going to happen, or nothing much is going to happen. So you're safer there, but you've still got that problem. So what we are doing here, or the objective of this, is to use a MOSFET to do the dissipation of that 50 volts, and yet um, not have to go for a Zener solution, which is expensive for that kind of power. And the way to do that is a very, very clever circuit that's on the web. As I said, R.G. Keen has got a description on his uh, website, and it's a page called MOSFET Follies. He describes this exactly, and it's elsewhere as well. I'm not sure who came up with the circuit, but it's a very good way of creating what one could possibly call a power zener with a low power zener, <laughs> if that makes any sense. You use a low power zener, a zener diode, and with a MOSFET, you create a power Zener, which can go from up to 25 watts without a problem because some of these MOSFETs can handle hundreds of watts. Mind you, there's heat sink conditions involved. But let's look at what we're trying to do. We're trying to create this thing here. That's basically it. We're trying to create a Zener voltage dropper without having to go for a very high power Zener. So how do we do that? Remember, this is all you're trying to do. Whether you put it up there or you put it down here, it makes no difference. The only difference is that here it's working on the lower voltage section. Okay, And this point here is, if you're using a full wave uh, bridge rectifier, if you've got something like this, which would normally be your plus, and this would be your minus, Okay, that's a full wave bridge rectifier. This means that you would put this Zener between your ground, you disconnect the ground from here, which is where it normally would be, you take this point, you take it to that side of that Zener, power Zener, take that side, connect it to ground. Everything else stays the same, because normally you are using this point as a common ground. Okay, So, if you're using a center tap transformer, the negative point of your center tap, of your uh, half-wave rectifier. It's a full wave, but using the two um, uh, windings of transformer, then your center tap is your ground, is your negative point, and that's where you'd put that. 
And in fact, R.G. Keen talks about precisely that, using this in the center tap of the transformer that's normally powering, say, a guitar amp or a, uh, usually it's a guitar amp he's talking about, but you can use it in any, any condition where you need a voltage drop. So let's look at how that works. So what are you trying to create is this. You're trying to create a Zener with a 50 volt drop. And the way they do it, I'll draw the circuit and then we'll go through how it works. It's actually very, very simple. This point here comes down, meets a MOSFET. This is a normal MOSFET. And you've got your drain, your source, and your grid. And what you do is you put your Zena here. And this then has a resistor to that point. And you then also use a resistor between that point there and your grid. And why does this work? How does this work? Okay. This Zena here, if this is a 50 volt Zena, you'll see why the result is actually more than 50 volts. If that's a 50 volt Zena, and you've got current coming in here from your load, you've got your load up here. Now your load has received the voltage at the top, the B plus, it's sending it to ground. So this part is still the current flow. This is the current flow that you're seeing here. Current is flowing through, through down here from a more uh, higher voltage point to a lower voltage point. Okay? And what you're doing here is you're taking this current, and what normally happens if you flow the current through a Zener in reverse biased, right, in its normal operation condition, with a current limiting resistor, okay, this Zener will have a potential drop of 50 volts across here. So it drops 50 volts, okay, provided this resistor is passing enough current to take this Zener into its operational um, part of operational area, operation mode, okay? What happens is that this point here then is at that voltage, at the same potential that you have at the top of the Zener. Current starts to flow through here. When it flows through here, this voltage goes up. As this voltage goes up, this MOSFET turns on. So this MOSFET, this voltage here, VGS, hits the point where the MOSFET starts to conduct. And at some point where you have current I going through the MOSFET, a potential difference, a voltage, a gate source voltage appears across here, which will be normally, normally between 3 and say 8, 9 volts, depending on the amount of current that goes through here. Um, we're looking at, let's say, a maximum of 1 amp going through here. If you look at the data sheet for the MOSFET, it's about five, let's call it six volts. So you've got six volts here with respect to that point. That's zero volts, okay? That's six volts. Six volts across here. What you need to make this Zener exhibit a 50 volt drop or whatever value it is rated for is enough current through this resistor to make the Zener operate properly. And the current through this resistor is that voltage divided by that resistor. And let's say we want, say, 5 milliamps of current. That's enough, all right? If you've got 6 volts, 5 milliamps, what does that come to? 3K? I make it a bit higher because what's happening is I want this thing to conduct a little bit more to make it more stable. So I use a 2K2. I believe... Uh, RG Keen circuit has a 2000 ohm resistor. All right, I use 2.2K, no problem. What you have here between, so this point is 6 volts. That point now is at 56 volts because it's the sum of these two. So that point there is ground, or this point, plus 56 volts. Okay? Now, that resistor there is, he uses 200 ohm, I use the 220 ohm. That's just to avoid oscillations. It doesn't draw current because the uh, MOSFET's uh, grid is a very, very, very high resistance, input impedance. So that's really just to avoid oscillations, okay? 
Then you take this point and you've got this point at a certain voltage, which is in this case is about 56 volts. It's the Zener drop plus the VGS required for the current. So this thing can go anywhere from, say, 3 volts to 8 or whatever, depending on the current. So this thing isn't absolutely fixed. It, it can vary, but it depends on the current, but it doesn't vary very much. It actually varies very little with relation to the uh, main Zener voltage, okay? So you have raised the, 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 the voltage to this point with a fair amount of current that can go through here. And if this MOSFET is a fairly powerful one, in other words, it can pass quite a bit of current, then as long as you put that on a heatsink, you can have very high currents going through here. This Zener can be simply a 1 watt or 1.3 watt Zener because very little current flows through the Zener and therefore the power dissipation of the Zena is very small, the amount of current flowing through the Zena is literally that 5 milliamps or so. Very little. Um, so your power dissipation here is very, very small, and you've got yourself a power MOSFET. Okay? For the price of a cheap Zena, a couple of resistors, and a MOSFET which costs you a buck or two. All right? The ones you can use here, provided the um, current capability is, is sufficient, for the maximum current that you will get from your load or through your load, provided the uh, drain to source voltage is high enough, so it has to be higher than 56 volts, you are safe, provided you provide the heatsink. Don't forget that, because the, the power consumption of, the, of this Zener that would normally be a high power Zener is now being dissipated by the MOSFET, which is designed more to do that, to dissipate heat. So provided that can handle it, and some of them go up to, you know, 200 watts or whatever, with a very good heatsink, don't forget that, you're fine, and you've created yourself a power Zena. Now, the only thing you need to do now is instead of this being zero volts, this goes to your negative supply of the, of the bridge rectifier or the center tap of your transformer. That thing there becomes ground. Zero volts, reference, that's your ground. And that then is minus 56 volts. And that's how this thing works. And it works really, really well. Now, there are a few considerations. This thing is going to the, to the bridge rectifier. It's actually seeing all the high current pulses that your capacitors that are connected to zero volts. You remember you've got smoothing capacitors between B plus and zero volts. Those current peaks are actually very, very high. It's not a constant current. So you've got fairly high peaks of current but your average is what you're looking at for power dissipation. Your peak is what you're looking at for the capacity that this uh, current capacity that the, 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 that the um, uh, MOSFET can take. And you can use any of those, you know, IRF, uh, 640, etc., etc. It has to be an end channel. And it has to have the voltage rating and the current rating and the power rating that you need. But you created yourself a very, very cheap power Zener. Right, I built one of these. I've actually gone a bit further and designed a little board um, and etched it because it makes it easier. Don't forget you're working with high currents. You're working with a lot of heat. So you've got to make it uh, fairly easy to, to install this. And uh, the little board that I designed is, is simple enough that you can very, very simply uh, swap out the Zener if your voltage drop is too high, increase it if it's too low, whatever you want to do. The rest of the components, all the other components stay the same, but you can play with this and you can have this for any, um, any circuit, any application where you need high power and you need a fixed voltage drop, or fairly fixed, as I said. This will be between 53 and 56, 57 volts of difference, which is perfectly fine for my needs. All right. So let me show you the, the little construction, and then I'll show you this thing in operation. So here we have the little circuit in the equipment, in the amp, ready for testing. And everything's switched off, so I'm not too afraid of touching it. This is what you've got. This is a little uh, board that I did, and here's the MOSFET at the top. The MOSFET's going to be bolted to the chassis with an insulator. Now, this particular MOSFET, this contact point here is actually the drain. And from the schematic, you can see the, the drain is actually ground. So if I bolted it directly to the chassis, which is ground, 
I shouldn't have a problem. However, I want this to stay with the uh, star grounding system that it has. So if I put another ground on here, I could create some ground loops. So I prefer to just insulate it, but it's not a dangerous uh, condition. It's just something to avoid uh, unwanted noise. I've got my, this is the negative point going to the ground, to the main star ground, this green wire. This yellow and green is coming from the negative of the bridge rectifier down here. So that's going to become my lowest point in the amp and it's the only point that, or this, this connection is the only one that sees that. The rest will see the ground point over here, which is actually the drain of that MOSFET. So the MOSFET is fitted in here and I've got the components on the underside. Now what I have here is I have a one, uh, 2K2, actually I think I've used a 1K resistor on here, that's right, just to um, bias the FETs, the uh, Zenas a little bit better. Um, I've got a 220 ohm to the, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, grid, to the grid of the MOSFET. I've actually got two Zenas in series and these are two uh, 15 watt, 15 volts, you know, I believe it's, uh, boy, I should have recorded that. Um, it's an 18 volt and a 15 volt Zena giving me 33 volts, which is what I, the ones I had lying around. This particular Zena down here is actually across in parallel to the uh, source, uh, the resistor from that center point to the source. And it's a 12 volt Zena just to avoid that voltage from going over 12 volts so that I can protect my MOSFETs grid. I'll show you that in the final schematic that I'll put on on the end. And now we're going to test this, see what sort of drop we're getting out of here. Now, I'm going to leave this in free air, which you have to be careful with because it does get hot. But I'm running this amp through the current limiter just to get a lower voltage and be able to test this with a little bit more safety in mind. So now I've connected the negative of the multimeter to the chassis, which is the chassis ground, the common ground. And I'm going to put the probe on the B plus point on this end of the amp. Well, you can't see it, but that's the B plus that I'm reading on here, 313. And what it should be, if I didn't have the Zener in, I'll show you, I'll put the meter to the negative of the bridge rectifier. And I'm losing 39 volts. So this isn't dropping 40, uh, 50 like I uh, described because I didn't want to drop 50. I'm losing about, I'm dropping about 39, 40 volts. And that's perfect because I've got, I actually just checked those uh, two Zenas are both 18 volts. So it's 36 plus about 3 for the, uh, for the MOSFETs uh, grid to source. And you have your minus 38 volts. So I've dropped this by 38 volts, call it 40 volts. And what's going to happen if I take that current limiter away, I'm going to switch it off because I've got this MOSFET in free air and it probably is getting quite warm. If I put 500 and uh, I think it was reading at 545 at one point, depending on how I bias the tubes, um, I'm going to get 505, 503 thereabouts, which is exactly what I want. So, as you can see, very simple and it works. And this is the little board that I etched just to do the, uh, to build the circuit. You'll notice that uh, I've done this etching in a particular way. I put the components on the copper side. It just makes it easier for me to solder. I don't have to drill these points through. It's so few, it's easy to actually solder them on the solder side. And then the only holes here are for the uh, three pins of the MOSFET, the drain, or rather the in and the out. So effectively, my Zena is between that point and that point there. So I hope you've found this useful. I'm just going to close off with uh, a shot of the final hand-drawn circuit of what I've actually used here. Uh, because there is that little Zena that protects the uh, the grid voltage so it doesn't exceed 12 volts if there's some sort of current spike or something like that that's just a protection for the mosfet and i hope it proves useful it, you can use this in a multiple uh, set of applications just to drop some voltage off it doesn't have to be a drop from a very very high voltage it could be any drop and if you don't want to use a high power zener high voltage uh, high power zener you've got a, a cheaper option 
and it can be as cheap as you know two bucks i think that's what this thing costs the mosfet i'm using is a nrf nrf p 27 n 60 which is just one i had lying around and it does the job so um thanks for watching hope you found this useful be very very careful you're dealing with high voltages in this thing if you do so you're doing it at your own risk this is my cover cover your ass speech um you should be very careful with heat sinking this thing it can blow if you don't heat sink it if it blows what you bas basically done is you've, you've you've opened a switch so your your power gets disconnected okay the same as if you had a fuse in place so it's not too dramatic you're working on the low voltage side so you could actually touch anywhere here uh, when it was on and the highest volt voltage point you'd have here would be those doubles the the sum of those zeners um, so it's not that dangerous there there is high current flowing through here so be very very careful and i hope you know what you're doing if you're going to play with this and i'll see you again soon thanks for watching bye for now